Call the October 18th, 2018 regular board meeting for the Piccola City Schools Board of Education to order. Uh, Mr. Idle, please call the roll. Mr. Patrizio. Here. Mr. Ford. Here. Mrs. McMacken. Here. Mr. Bostick. Here. Mr. Height. Here. Please stand and join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> we'll get there. Okay, if you've had a chance to review the minutes from our September 27th meeting, uh, we have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Do you have any uh, additions or corrections to the minutes? If not, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay, do we have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight? So moved. We have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, please signify your approval by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Career Center Board report is easy because we don't meet for another week. So that would I have nothing on hearing to the public. Uh, so, Mr. Hill, you're up. Good evening. Are there any questions about the reports that you received? Next thing that's on there is the five-year forecast, and this is the one that I would say uh, means the least of all the five-year forecasts that I give you because the uh, governor will be changing in January. Uh, we don't have a state budget to work off of uh, moving into the next fiscal year. And so we're just using historical data to uh, come up with the numbers that are there. And it's similar to the ones that you've had in the past. Um, not too many changes have been made. <coughs> um, in the forecast that you can see, um, we're looking good through at least 2021 at this point in time. And that's, that's normal with our uh, five-year forecast. It's too much uncertainty as you move out into the uh, two years beyond the, the first three. I'm not going to do a long presentation tonight. Um, if you've got questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, that's all I have. Okay. So we we need to go ahead. We need to uh, approve the uh, five approve your agenda, the five year forecast. If there's no other questions, do we have a motion to approve the five year forecast? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion. If not, Mr. Hiddle, please call the roll. Who was the first on that? Me. Get caught up. Sorry. Sorry. I had to type something first. Okay. Mr. Ford. Aye. Ms. McMacken. Aye. Mr. Bostic. Aye. Mr. Height. Aye. Mr. Patrizio. Aye. Okay. Superintendent's report. Thank you. Good evening. We typically do a um, presentation by one of the schools, and the schools are all in conferences um, tonight, so all the principals, I've asked them to stay back in the building because they need to participate with those and be there for the parents. So um, instead of that, we've asked the curriculum department if they could come forward and just talk about some of the curriculum initiatives and some of the things that are happening with the state. So um, we have Teresa Anderson and Scott Bloom with us this evening. Just a couple of things. for further growth for those who need it. So that's been a, a, 
actually been quite fun to go around and get back into the cl every classroom and see what's happening because there are some great things happening. Um, assessments, uh, two things in that area. Um, part of our whole balanced literacy initiative, we implemented using um, it's called the BAS, B A S, which stands for the Benchmark Assessment System, and we've implemented this for grades K through five. Um, and the reason that that is so important is because up until now we haven't had a um, consistent measure all the way through. We would start with some assessments in one grade and then we'd switch a little bit later and switch a little bit later. So it was really difficult to track kids all the way through consistently seeing what growth. And so we're doing that now. Um, it places students on a level and then we have um, resources that teachers can use to specifically go back to see what that level is and which skills need to be taught in order to progress to the next level and we've provided the resources for that. So that's been really important. Um, the air tests for the third grade, the first administration begins October 23rd and 24th, so gearing up for that next week. Um, and then the second administration will be in April, and as you probably know, they have an opportunity to take an alternate assessment if they aren't proficient on the air test. We use the Terranova for that, and that will be given in January, and then again in the spring, so they actually have four opportunities before summer school to demonstrate their proficiency in reading. Um, last thing is, um, last year we brought um, Chad Ostrowski to the district to do um, some PD with our staff on um, a strategy called the GRID method. We have um, two pilot groups, one at the junior high, um, uh, high school with a couple of junior high teachers and at PCIS, <coughs> and um, some of them have been trying it. We've been hearing some good things from our students about really enjoying the design of that very student-led in terms of um, being able to control their own learning. Um, Chad has met with the teachers on three different occasions. He, he'll be back in the district again next week on Monday and Tuesday, meeting in with all the teachers who are working on that, doing some checkpoints with them and getting some feedback with them as well. And the last thing that we're really working on is uh, January 3rd. We have a district-wide professional development day, so um, members of the cabinet and I have been working on getting that. Good evening, uh, I'm going to go even faster because we're at three and a half to eight, oh, uh, 30 <laughs> seconds and I want to work. So, um, one of the big initiatives that we work with is something called a Procore. Procore is a way for us to measure student growth throughout the year. Um, the nice part about that is it is standards based, meaning students are able to work with their teachers to take assessments that mirror the air tests that they take uh, through the state. Um, they're formative, so there is no uh, there is no penalty for not doing well in these. They're really constructive assessments rather than sort of a final do it or don't do it kind of assessment. So we can really work with kids to address areas that need strengthening or even enhance areas that are really strong. Um, we use them in grades two through twelve, ELA, math, science, social studies. We've given thousands of them already this year. The nice part is the average length of those is about ten minutes. So we can do that as part of a daily instruction and get right back to it. And the teachers are starting to get to the point where they give one, see how their kids did, and adjust instruction the next day, which is really what we want when we uh, work with this kind of assessment. So that's going really well here. Um, we have upgraded some materials at PHS in the science department. We use a, a company called Vernier. Vernier makes these really neat um, sensors, all sorts of different things. We can do everything from measuring motion to magnetic fields to pH. Right, we actually purchased two spectrophotometers, which allows the uh, chemistry department to actually see the wavelengths of light of chemicals. We can do all of those with Chromebooks. They're embedded right in the classroom. We actually now, I'm, I'm pushing them down to the junior high, and I've got some meetings with elementary teachers in a couple of weeks. We're gonna get second, third graders doing some neat things with, with uh, basically building their own data and working with that. So. Um, it's a nice piece for us to have. Um, robotics, we have a really uh, uh, wonderful robotics club at PCIS. We use Lego Robotics as the platform. Um, so they're really uh, familiar with the process and how to build these. So we average between 40 and 50 students every other Tuesday. Um, and they're doing everything from constructing these to actually building the programs. Um, we have fourth graders th uh, who are building autonomous robots that 
they program to do something and it goes and does it. So it's, if you ever get a chance, uh, Tuesdays after their day, uh, PCS, PCIS is day, you can come see some kids doing some really neat things with that. Um, Garden Tribe, we have 24 beds out there now. Um, I help build all of those. I'm, I have all 10 fingers. That's really my measure of success right there. Um, but uh, we double basically the number of garden beds out there so that the kids have more space with which to, uh, to plant. And they've already harvested once this year. They harvested radishes. And I went out there and I was talking to some of the kids. You'd be amazed at how many students did not know what a radish in the wild actually looks like. Because where does it come from? It comes from the grocery store, and it's this little red thing. They were pulling them out going, no idea that this is what a radish looked like. So what a great learning experience for them to understand, I did this, and my food comes from here. Um, and finally, with assessments, to kind of echo what uh, Teresa said, we will begin air assessments in the fall, December 3rd. Those are for uh, high schoolers. Um, typically, it's for students who need to retake an assessment. Kids are allowed to take them at any time, but this is a lot, we use this primarily for kids who need to take it again. Um, we have uh, 15 days once we begin to do that in the fall, so we'll end up right before the holiday uh, recess. Um, and finally, with assessments on October 31st, we do something really unique here. We offer the Cambridge assessments here, and the Cambridge assessments are where stem from uh, a student that we had last year who was applying to go to the UK to study. We didn't have a place for him to go and take this, so I just decided we'll do it here. I had no idea. I figured it would be just him and I doing this. Uh, this year I have 25 students from about six states who will come to Piqua, Ohio. We are one of the few test centers this side on the East Coast. So I have kids coming from Michigan and New York, D.C., and the South to come here to take this. And it's a really neat experience to, to see that different wide swath of kids who, uh, who are going to take this. So it's pretty interesting. And it's a, they, they all say, wow, Piqua does this? And I said, yeah, we do. Um, they've been very impressed that the district offers this. So um, it's a neat, a neat thing for us to offer. So thank you. How do you get the word out that you're, you're offering that test to that big an area? Uh, well, we, we're a test center through Cambridge. When kids go on and say, I want to go study physics at you know, one of the colleges in Oxford, our name pops up. You can go to Pickle, Ohio to do this. And uh, they will contact me and we'll get them registered. The, the UK is different. We use the ACT for every program. There, if I want to go study math, I take a math test. If I want to do physics, I take a physics test. And they're much stricter. If I do not pass this, I do not study math. That's how it goes. So uh, the kids who come to do this are very, very focused in on this type of assessment. So um, it's a really good uh, thing for our district to offer. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Any questions for our curriculum department? That sounds my, like they've been busy. My son is in the robotics club. He loves it. He comes home every, every other week just raving about it. He's doing the coolest stuff. So that's a great Thing. If you want to see high energy, that is definitely a club to go to because it is. Those kids are full of it, and they're just so so stoked all the time. Yeah. Thank you again. Um, just again, conferences are are this week, which means the first quarter has ended, and it's unbelievable that we're heading into the second. Into that second quarter, um, wanted to give um, congratulations to our marching band, who's just had a great season so far, and they've they've more than qualified for state. They've qualified. Uh, multiple times at their own contest this last week. Um, they got straight ones from every single judge, and they're just bringing home all kinds of awards, so really good season for them. Um, wanted to mention that on November 7th, it will be the 40th anniversary of the bond issue passing for the high school, and it's hard to believe that 40 years has um, passed by, but um, it's a really, really unique story. So it started in 1970, actually, and it failed four times before the whole entire city came together. And um, we went back last year and worked with our media group and the students, and we've interviewed over 20 people from that time period, board members, um, superintendents, just different people that worked on that. Um, I think Gordy Weiss told me over 500 people worked on that levy campaign. Um, from the chamber, we had business people. We have researched Pickle Daily Call articles and photos. We've got WPTW, radio, um, re the, the real commercials and real interviews and things that happen. It's, it's very very interesting and there's a actually we were going to put one 
series together, but the interviews went so well that we could not get a two-hour um, block with that. So we're going to have a three-part series that's going to go out, and the, the um, Indian Nation Station is going to, to put that on for us. So the first one is just about done, and we're going to premiere that on November 7th. We're going to invite all those people back. We'll invite the public out, and um, anybody can meet some of those people to them and it really it, it, it is really a fascinating um, time to just talk to them and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you you know when you talk to Gordy Wise who was the architect and Dwayne Bachman um, they literally get emotional they, they cannot tell you stories about the people and their involvement without just getting emotional about it so that that building is iconic and so many people have gone out there and experienced it so um, it's a great story it, it really is so I'm, I'm anxious for that to come out and, you, and you'll enjoy that that as well so um, be looking for that and then finally, um, Jeremy and I are always looking for ways to um, save money and bring money into our district. And we've, we've talked about the Honeywell project. And with that, as we kept digging and going through some of those energy savings, we found a way to get some rebates. And we're really excited about something we learned this, this week um, through the Electric Market Connection. Um, they're able to take um, groups that, that are aggregates in a grid system. So we're in the PJM grid system, which is Pennsylvania, Jersey, Maryland. And as part of that, because we are now saving so much energy, we qualify for some rebates, which means free money coming back to the district. And I'll let Jeremy talk a little bit about that money, but this is exciting. And it's just, again, us poking and looking and trying to find ways to just bring money back to us. So um, Jeremy, go ahead and tell them a little bit about, about what we're gonna get. Yeah, like Dwayne mentioned, we were just trying to find some other ways to do that. We knew like if our demand went down, there should be some way to benefit from that because there's all those demand charges and things that happen. Um, and because we're on municipal electric, it's a little bit more tricky because we're not in a rebate program, those kind of things. So we kept searching and found, ended up finding this. And we were able to um, get in a position where we're going to get a rebate check back for $5,000 a year, $2,500 uh, each half to be able to do that. So for the amount of money we've changed just for changing out the light bulbs. So um, that's, that's good news by itself. So that'll be over four years, we'll get $5,000 a year for that. So it's just something that we were able to find uh, additional to help add to the savings we're getting from that guaranteed project through Honeywell. Have you seen a savings in the utility bills yet? So with that being said, we had a very hot, more hot than normal uh, September, October time frame, and so I can't give you that information at this point. It's not, as, not exactly where it should be, but considering the temperatures that we had, um, it wasn't normal either. So I would say our bills are not, they were not higher than they were last year at this time, but it was hotter than this year last time. So I think the savings is there. It's just, it's hard for me to say that at the moment because the temperature was not normal either, so. We only have about two months in on it yet, so. Yeah, we're, we're just in the early stages. Um, that's it for my report. Okay. Uh, recommend board approval for the attached list of donations. Um, just want to thank um, Dane and Don Whitney for their donation to the junior class. We also had the Upper Valley um, Community Church um, donated over $1,000 worth of supplies for students, which we, we appreciate. Um, Ruth and Gina Apple um, donated some money in, in John Apple's memory. And then we had uh, Mutual Federal and the Pickle Chamber donated some money to the Pickle Garden Tribe, which uh, just that garden project just continues to amaze me. The, the radishes he talked about, my son brought one home. It was the size of a beet. I've never seen radishes that big. And he just talked all night about it. He, could, he couldn't believe it. And he, he never would try a radish I would buy um, from the store. But he was bound and determined, boy, we were going to cut that up. And each of us had a piece of it. So um, he was so excited. Just, just a good project. So that's it on that. OK. Do we? Uh, we don't need to approve. Yes, you would approve okay. the donations. All right, do we have a motion to approve the donations? So moved. Have a second? Second. We have a motion and a, and a second. Any further discussion? If not, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Mr. Lyons. Just a couple things. You'll notice on the personnel agenda we did have some turnover in transportation. And um, I would like to mention that that is probably one of the most challenging positions out there is driving a bus. Again, with 50 or 60 young folks behind you, it is a challenge every day. So my point with this is it's taken a couple years, but Beth Kane, our, our transportation director, has done a great job of developing um, a group of people who are substitutes, but they've been trained by us and they're ready to go 
when we need that to happen. So eventually we're going to find those folks who are perfect for that job. And we have in, in many cases, but the nice part is we have people ready to go. Um, she just emailed me before I came in here. There's another person that she's going to begin training. And when there's an opening through retirement or whatever it might be, we'll have somebody ready to go. So that's great, great news um, on that side of things. And then at the end, again, volunteers. And I want to make sure everybody's clear because we added the Raptor system this year for people coming in to volunteer within the school. And folks who are interested in coming in to work in a classroom, whether you're reading a book, uh, as long as you're with the supervision of a teacher, can come in, go through that system with an ID, get a label, and be in the building. Anybody who wants to go on a field trip outside of school who will be supervising our children in that capacity will need to come and get fingerprinted. But you don't need to come and get fingerprinted just to come and, and be in the school for a day, a period, a, uh, if you're volunteering, like at the uh, book fair today. We had volunteers that those are things that you can, you can do through the Raptor system. So just some clarity on, on that um, as well. So outside of that, very short agenda. Uh, okay. Is Beth finding it's easier, or, or is she still struggling to get people for the bus, or is that starting to level out a little bit? So it, we always need people because we have a difficult time of finding great people all the time. But what she's done is developed that pool. So we do have people there ready and waiting because they've been trained, and they're excited about taking it on, which is nice. So when we do have turnover, again, whether it's a retirement or something, we have somebody kind of standing there. The nice thing about what she's doing with it now is she's been taking all those sub drivers and having them ride full routes multiple days with the actual driver so that they're getting used to what it looks like and what the experience is of being that person in front uh, with the kiddos there. So it's not a shock of just jumping on that bus for the first time. So I think the training program by itself, it's a learning process for her as well, but we're getting to a point where we're developing some folks who are really ready to jump in up in the seat. We also have been trying to put an aid on the bus with a new driver because drivers are trained to do all the driving part, you know, all those roles. But again, you I know what it's like with my three kids behind me in a van, <laughs> but you put kids behind you, that changes the whole game. Mm -hmm. So having an aid in there to help control the behaviors while they're focusing on the routing and, and just, just the law is, is an important piece. And, and we've, we've had several parents that are wanting to do this because they might want to go, their kid might be in a sport, so they want to go to the sporting events, they get in free, plus they get to drive there. And so we have some parents that'll um, ban students, uh, support students and so on that'll, that'll do this. And then we end up, you know, pulling them in. So it's a, it's a win for us and them. You know, I visited um, Beth and sat out there with the, you know, just seeing the bus drivers. I hadn't done that this year. And I was amazed at the culture that yeah. they have developed. Beth has it set. And the bus drivers seem to have their a really positive culture there. I mean, it was really neat. They had motivational things for kids on the bus. They had, you know, all kind of stuff. It, it's amazing what she what they have done. They yeah. just participated in what's called the bus rodeo, and it's a competition that bus drivers in this whole area, and it's a wide area, so it's a lot of school districts that get together, and they do some pretty tough competitions. They have to maneuver the bus. They have to do test on on the laws and rules and they get scenarios thrown at them that they have to kind of come through and our drivers ranked four i don't know how many schools were there but there were a lot of a lot of schools there so they were real excited and they they improved from last year and next year they're trying trying to get in the top three so they're they're, they're excited good it's a great group we, we really have a great group of people <coughs> dedicated to that so it's nice that's all i have okay so do we have a motion to approve the personnel agenda? So second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Old business tonight. Just again, second read on the um, Neil Laborde policy updates. They were very minor things. There was nothing that's going to change our work. It's just simple words, dates, things like that. So um, very typical. And the second read would make them go into action then. Okay. With your approval. Okay. So we need, do we have a motion to approve these uh, uh, updates? Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. And new business. Hey, um, I'm asking to approve going out for bid for the. Um, gas with the EPC. We've been working with them for multiple years. Um,
we get a low, a lower price with that. I'm also doing this, but have another thing on the burner again, looking for money and ways to save money. Um, high voltage, it's an energy company has gotten contact with me and has pointed out a few things with the way our billing and stuff has been going with the EPC project. So um, I'm working through that. It's a little early to say what exactly is going on. We're on a different rate code potentially than what we should be on, which could save us $12,000 a year, um, as well as um, saving about $3,000 a year at least on the low end side for our natural gas. Um, so I'm still investigating that, but um, forbid for the EPC doesn't mean that we have to agree to the contract once it comes back. So we're, we're going to do that, but then I'm still working with them trying to figure out if there's a better way to do it than what we're doing. Okay, very good. Okay, do we have a motion to approve the, uh, the bid for the um, natural gas service? So moved. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Good luck, Monty Hall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have nothing on hearing of the public on non-agenda items. Uh, our next, we have a work session scheduled for November 11th at 1230 at the OSBA conference in Columbus, and that'll be at the Drury Inn and Suites in the uh, convention center. Our next regular meeting then will be on the 14th of November 15th. 15th. That's why I said the 15th of November. Um, four days later, that's where that came from. Um, and that will be back here. So if there's no further business to come before the board, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.